in and out Burger, game-changing origin and business model explained. Millions across the United States are loyal customers of in and out Burger. Many times they queue for hours or drive miles just to get their hands on an in and out Burger. But what has made this brand so popular and successful? Before we dive into it and give you eight reasons why, I have a request to make. Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. That way you won't miss any of the videos we publish every week about brands you've interacted with and whose stories might pique your interest. With that out of the way, let's get back to today's pick. in and out Burger was founded in 1948 by Harry Snyder and his wife Esther Snyder. The couple had been hired to work in other restaurants before they decided to open their own. Their first stand was in Baldwin Park, Los Angeles, California. They were the pioneers of drive through hamburger joints in California and among the first in the US. And the idea of customers driving to a two-way speaker system to place orders proved popular. The small mom-and-pop establishment soon had to open more stands. In 1976, Harry Snyder died at the age of 63. He left the chain with 18 restaurants spread across Southern California. Rich, the elder of his two sons, took over the management of the company. Rich was very effective. He began working at the company at an early age, and so when his time to lead it came, he knew what to do. During his reign, the company continued to grow, however, nothing much changed in terms of the menu and the quality. He continued to open more in and out burger restaurants in cities and towns in the state of California. Just as he had begun to focus on expanding the chain outside California, his reign as the president of in and out Burger was cut short. In December 1993, a plane carrying from Fresno, where he'd opened his 93rd store, to Orange County, crashed just as it was about to touch down at John Wayne Airport. He died along with the other four passengers. With Rich's demise, his brother, Guy Snyder, took over the leadership of the company. In the next six years, Guy oversaw more expansions. He, in particular, added more restaurants outside California. In 1992, his brother had opened a stand at Las Vegas, Nevada, which was the first ever outside their home state. In total, Guy opened 47 locations in California and the neighboring states in the time he was the president of the company. He did not stay long, though, at the helm. It turned out he'd been struggling with drug addiction for years, and he'd even checked himself into a rehab a few times. He lost the battle with addiction. In 1999, he died of a painkiller overdose. But the leadership remained within the Snyder family. The matriarch of the family, Esther Snyder, took over from her son as the president and continued to expand and grow the company. When Esther Snyder passed on in 2006, the presidency was passed to Mark Taylor, who became the first non-Snyder family member to hold the position. He has since joined the family through marriage. He's the husband to the stepdaughter of Guy Snyder. When Guy Snyder's only biological child, Lindsay Snyder, who was also the sole heiress, turned 30 in 2012, she took over as the company's president. She is the sole owner of the company and has continued to oversee its expansion. Unlike its competitors, like McDonald's, In-N-Out Burger has chosen not to franchise. In recent interviews, Lindsay Snyder has ruled out going public. According to her, that can only be done with money as the primary motivation, and for her, that's not acceptable. She has expressed wishes to pass on the company to her own kids. Currently, the company is valued at over $3 billion, with an annual revenue of close to $600 million. in and out Burger has about 400 branches in seven states – California, Arizona, Nevada, Texas, Oregon, Colorado and Utah. So what's made in and out Burger such a success? My research gave me eight reasons. The first reason is that it has a simple product offer. in and out Burger customers are never lost in an extended menu. The in and out Burger menu has only burgers, cheeseburgers, french fries and drinks, sodas and shakes. This simple menu has not changed for at least 40 years. In-N-Out Burger is best known for its animal-style burger, which is made of buns, beef, vegetables, their secret sauce, among other ingredients. As any marketer worth their salt would tell you, simplicity in a unique brand or product is a huge selling point. 
In-N-Out Burger seems to be a great example of a product that has leveraged simplicity. The second reason In-N-Out Burger stands out among its competitors is the culture of using fresh ingredients and serving their burgers and fries immediately, as soon as they're out of the pan. One of the age-old In-N-Out Burger rules is that no ingredients or food are frozen or microwaved. It's a strong belief by the company that freezing and microwaving food or its ingredients affects the final taste that's achieved in the kitchen. And going by the popularity of the brand, the number of loyal customers it's acquired over the years, and in particular how committed the company is to keep this culture, most likely there's some truth in this. To make it possible that the ingredients and the food is not frozen for preservation, the company has created a system that makes it unnecessary to preserve the food. In particular, In-N-Out produces its own meat, and that has been the case for most of its history. Each branch has to be close to a raw material distribution center, in particular, the company-owned meat-producing facilities. That means the meat can be transported short distances to reach the kitchen while fresh without needing to apply extreme preservation methods. This requirement partly explains why the company has grown slowly in terms of the number of branches, especially compared to its competitors. The third reason In-N-Out is popular with Americans is its consistency with the menu and recipes. It's important to point out that as human beings, we're wired such that memories are burned into our brains with whatever tastes and smells occur at the moment. There must be people who keep going back to In-N-Out Burger because consciously or subconsciously, it reminds them of good memories in the distant past. It's a smart, long-term marketing strategy. The fourth reason In-N-Out has maintained its relevancy and growth is the decision to keep everything close. As mentioned earlier, unlike its competitors like McDonald's, In-N-Out Burger chose not to franchise. This has helped it to keep a close watch on critical minor details such as the percentage of fat in the beef used for the burger. It also helps to provide a standard experience both for customers and employees as well as the delivery process. While this has to some extent hampered growth, it has helped to maintain loyal customers. The fifth reason In-N-Out has continued to prosper is working to be a good member of the community it serves. For example, the company has a policy of giving discounts to members of the local police department and first responders. The sixth reason In-N-Out is the first choice for millions of Americans is effective marketing. Some of it has been aggressive and some of it very benign. In-N-Out Burger has used conventional ad campaigns such as TV commercials and billboards. It's also used more nuanced marketing strategies, such as having influential celebrities to directly or indirectly endorse their products. And that includes celebrity chefs like Gordon Ramsay, Thomas Keller, Julia Child, Anthony Bourdain, Ina Garten and Mario Batali. Anthony Bourdain, for example, has been quoted calling In-N-Out his favourite fast food meal and naming a Los Angeles In-N-Out location the best restaurant in the city. Other celebrities have made news for eating In-N-Out burgers, talking about it or blaming it for driving while under the influence like Paris Hilton did in 2006. While it might seem coincidental, when a celebrity mentions a brand or is photographed by paparazzi using it, often it's not the case. A few times it's a marketing gimmick masquerading as an innocent moment. And that's the same as the news about the brand on TV. The latter is also common with In-N-Out Burger. The seventh reason the In-N-Out is great is because they treat their employees nicely. Treating employees nicely translates to a great customer service experience. The members of staff seem to be adequately trained, and they pay them well. According to reports, In-N-Out pays its low cadre employees a wage higher than the industry average. In fact, In-N-Out is among the few fast food chains in the United States that pay their employees more than state and federally mandated minimum wage. For example, the lowest hourly rate the company pays in California is $14. It's been reported that In-N-Out store managers earn as much as $160,000 on average. Yes, that is a lot for flipping burgers. In addition, they're entitled to a free meal per shift. All that motivates the employees to give customers the best experience possible. The eighth reason is good leadership. While the company has continued to prefer someone from the Snyder family for the presidency, that seems to have worked fine so far. But perhaps there's a good reason for that. The company has a trustee board that helps the president make decisions. Members of the board seem to have always been highly qualified individuals 
with a capacity to provide sound business advice. In and Out is also known for printing Bible verses on some of their packaging materials. In one interview, Lindsay Snyder has explained the inspiration being her decision to embrace Christianity after the death of her father and three failed marriages. So, we can take that to mean that there's nothing sinister about the verses, nor is it some form of code. But not everything has been rosy with the company. In May 2017, the in and out Burger in Livermore, California was temporarily closed after nine members of a college softball team became sick after eating at that particular restaurant. The investigations have never been conclusive as to whether the players ate infected food at the restaurant or they caught the illness elsewhere. It also seems like there was a little leadership friction between Esther Snyder and her granddaughter Lindsay Snyder, who is the current president. In 2006, an employee, Richard Boyd, filed a lawsuit to stop his firing. In the lawsuit, he made claims that Lindsay and other corporate executives were trying to force out Esther Snyder before firing him. Esther and Lindsay denied these claims and Boyd left the company. Nobody really knows the path in and out will take in the future. Will it franchise? Will it go public? We'll just have to wait and see. Thank you for sticking with me to this point. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do. It means a lot to us. Don't forget to share and comment. See you in our next video. Bye-bye.